I am in the latest version of UiPath 2022.10 and in this version we have something which is called data manager which is responsible for managing all the resources including the arguments. In this video we are going to see what are the best practices that as a developer you need to follow while creating the arguments. So the first thing first I'll go to the data manager which is available on the right side window here. Click on this filter and I'll select arguments and I'll just uncheck all of this to just see only the arguments. In case you don't understand data manager, a dedicated video explaining the data manager is available in the description. Now arguments are required to pass the data from one XAML file to another XAML file. UiPath provides three type of arguments in, out and in, out. Whenever I attempt to create a new argument, UiPath is going to ask me, give me the name of the argument. Now one option is I can leave it like this argument, but what is the best practice says? The best practice says that the argument name should be proper the same way we were renaming a variable. Let's say this is my workflow and which is expecting an name as an argument, right? So I'm going to name this argument as in underscore name. Now you might be thinking why in? right because the direction for the argument is in right now as you know that the direction can be in out and in out so in case if you are creating a in direction argument you can rename it with in underscore name provide the data type and then the default value right similarly if i have to create an argument which i want to give outside of this workflow so i can give something like out underscore score something like this and the direction would be out now the next question what happens if I want to create a variable which is of type in out so I'll simply go to the argument and this time I'll write io underscore let's say city now this means that this argument is going to behave both as an input as well as an output direction right so that is one of the best practice that you can follow while creating that argument in io and out the other thing is whenever you have to name the argument name it properly which simply means that if I have to create an argument let's say where I am expecting a phone number so do not create it like this in underscore s right nobody know what is in underscore s give it a proper name the same thing which we have discussed in the variable the same applies to here as well right give it a proper name whenever your name has two things such as phone number right so you can always use a camel case which looks something like this in underscore phone number right so that way anybody who is reading this automation and when you yourself are developing the automation you would understand that yes this is a phone number and it is of type integer you can specify here there is one more concept in arguments which is called the default values and which is applicable only when the direction is input. If you see here, here the direction is in out so it do not have a default value for the out also you do not have a default value. Now what does the best practice says for the default value? The default values will be always overridden by the external calling XAML. So let's say there is a XAML which invokes this sequence this default value would always get override. So when should a developer use the default value? The default value should be used whenever you are testing the individual XAML. Consider an example, you have five different XAML or five different sequence in your automation. All the sequence are passing data one sequence one to sequence two, three, four and five. Let's say you have a requirement where you only want to test sequence number three. So you do not have to run directly from sequence number one. You directly can go to the sequence number three, provide the value of that input arguments by default here, and you can individually test the XAML, right? So the best practice for having the default value is that you should have default value only when you want to test. Anyways, when you invoke this sequence from outside, this value will always get override. And last one, once you are done with the automation, your automation should not have any unused arguments okay so the best practice to remove is that in the uipath studio you have this option at the top which says remove unused select this option from here and you would notice that you have something which is called remove unused arguments 
it will show me all the arguments which are not being used so these are all the ones which we created we are not using any one of them i click on ok and uipath will automatically remove all the arguments from the automation complete dedicated video on project level best practices are available on the channel link is available in the bio thank you for watching and happy automation Thank you.